Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Um, my name is Marsha Smallhorn, so I'm one of the academics here in uh, science and engineering. I, my background is biological sciences, so particularly uh, molecular biology. My PhD was in molecular biology, biochemistry, genetics is my area. And we're really excited um, to have you here today. So we hope that you get to meet um, lots of new people. So your number one aim today is to meet at least one other person and remember their name. And then even if you don't remember their name, when you come back uh, next week or later this week, and if you see them again, there's nothing wrong with reintroducing yourself. So that's what orientation is about. It's making um, those connections. So I'll go through the timetable for today. We've got a few videos. So our vice chancellor, uh, Colin Sterling, has a little introduction video we're going to watch. And, um, and then we have our Dean of Education and um, our Executive Dean of the College, our Vice President of the College. Um, we'll also give a little introduction and then we'll get started. So I want you to ask as many questions as you can today. So just pop your hand up, um, you can call out. Um, we do also have a roving microphone and I've got, you can see some wipes, so I'll give them a clean between um, people holding it. Just to let you know that this uh, lecture is actually being recorded and it's being live streamed. So we're going to try and use the microphones for questions just so that um, anyone listening online or who watches this later um, can get that same information as well. We also have with us um, some student ambassadors and you may have met um, a few of them already today. They're in the blue tops. So some of them were in your shoes last year or a couple of years ago. And so they're great sources of information. And as an extra special treat in this lecture theatre also, we have an alumni. So someone who was in your shoes a few more years ago, and they're going to um, come and talk to you about their experience as well. So it should be um, lots of fun. So I'm just going to pop on the next video. So this is our official welcome to Flinders. Hi, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to Flinders University. Every year it's terrific to see new faces on campus and to know that so many people have chosen to study here at Flinders. I love walking through the hub, feeling that incredible buzz and seeing students just like you, talking to new friends, sharing ideas, helping each other out. These are just some of the things that make Flinders such a wonderful place to study, as I'm sure you'll discover once you find your feet. Your first few days may seem a bit of a blur. We've all been there. Starting university is a big step, and it takes time to learn all the ins and outs. But don't worry, plenty of support's available to help make your transition to life at Flinders as easy as possible. Flinders staff and student ambassadors can help you find your way. And I know from experience that your fellow students are kind, inclusive, and always ready to help. So where do you begin? Well, Flinders website's a great starting point. You'll find campus maps and plenty of information about university life. Our Ask Flinders Facebook page will keep you up to date on university events and Flinders news. Flinders also has a busy social scene. And Flinders University Student Association, FUSA, can help you find social clubs and many other activities. As well as online support, we also provide support in person at our campus locations at Sturt, Tonsley, Victoria Square, Regional South Australia, and across the Northern Territory. Here at Bedford Park, the Flinders Connect team in the hub can answer questions about enrolments and course information. The Student Learning Centre within Flinders Library is also a great resource for any academic help that you might need. Our confidential and professional health, counselling and disability services are available to all students and Flinders Oasis drop-in centres a warm and inviting space for people from all backgrounds to socialise. Oh and of course Bedford Park has plenty of food outlets although I'm sure you've discovered those for yourself already. I'm confident that you're going to love being a student here at Flinders University, and I hope you're going to have the time of your life.
Okay. So I've got one more video to watch and that'll be it, which is the introduction from our Vice President and Dean of Education. But before I watch that, does anyone have the first question of the day? No first questions? Yeah? No? Okay. Well, keep a hold of those questions. I want you to think about some questions to ask today. We do have um, some prizes for questions today. And some of them are pretty good prizes. So. Um, have a think about um, something that you might like to ask. So we're just going to watch our final um, video. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the College of Science and Engineering here at Flinders University. This time of year, we get to welcome our diverse cohort of new students into our college. We get to introduce them to our warm and embracing community, our expert lecturers and faculty, and our state-of-the-art facilities spread across our Bedford Park and Tonsley campuses. You are about to commence a remarkable journey, a journey that will transform you from a student into a scientist, a computer scientist, a mathematician, or even an engineer. Our aim is to offer you a world-class education that will provide you with huge potential for your future. You'll be taught by some of the best educators in Australia, many of which are also experts in their field of research. They will give you a cutting edge perspective in your studies, preparing you for jobs of the future. You'll receive a great deal of hands-on learning and we will provide you with opportunities to explore and create in the laboratory and in the field. You've got an exciting year ahead of you. To put this in perspective, let's look back at the last few years. Our Tonsley campus has been up and running for six years and has served as an innovation hub for South Australia since opening in 2015. In 2020, at Tonsley, the opening of Line Zero marked Australia's first large-scale advanced manufacturing accelerator, which will see the application of new technologies in an advanced manufacturing setting and enable students and researchers to interact with the forefront of innovation. We aim to provide you with an excellent learning environment using unique learning spaces that create stimulating and interactive learning opportunities. Hosting some of Australia's top academic minds, both our Bedford Park and Tonsley campuses have seen thousands of students enter stimulating learning environments where they have pursued a wide variety of research projects and industry placements. And with our new Flinders train station, Tonsley and Bedford Park have been brought even closer together. These are only a few of the highlights from our recent years on an ever-growing list. Student well-being is a priority for us and we take it very seriously. We will ensure that all students are provided with the support and encouragement that is needed to succeed and excel. All of our courses and topics have student representatives and academics that are available to help guide you through your programs in a very productive manner. Each year, our Work Integrated Learning Program has over 200 students undertake placements in a wide variety of industries, government bodies and not-for-profit organisations, providing them with the opportunity to put their practical and theoretical learnings into practice through one of the longest work placement programs in Australia. Flinders is a hub of social activities. We have a number of student clubs and associations you can join that will help you connect with other like-minded students. Whether it be helping to build a solar car, becoming environmentally active, joining the gym, or actually just listening to live music at the tavern, you'll find a community to be part of. Students are the heart of Flinders University, and as the Dean Education, I would like to wish you well and encourage you to get the very most out of your experience while you are here. I hope you have a wonderful year ahead. With that, we're excited to welcome you. Welcome to the Flinders community. Welcome to the forefront of innovation. And welcome to your future. We can't wait to see where your time at Flinders will take you. And we're so glad to be part of your journey. listening to those. Because we're doing the lecture live in multiple venues, um, the deans weren't able to attend today and so hence we had the video. 
So before we go any further, I'd um, like to acknowledge that we're meeting today on Ghana land and pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. So this is the outline for today. So this welcome lecture is going to run until just before 11 o'clock. That clock is not correct, <laughs> otherwise it would already be over. Um, after that, we're going to move on to the campus tours. So we've got, um, we'll have a few more student ambassadors here. So there should be about six of us. We'll break into groups, hopefully based on discipline. So you can meet some more people from your area of study. And then the student ambassadors will take you on a tour around the campus. So we're going to go all the way up to the Silk Building uh, IST, where you'll have a lot of your um, first year workshops and um, tutorial style classes all the way down to the hub and around to student services, the library. If there's a particular venue you'd like to see, so you've already seen your timetable and you're not sure where that room is, um, ask the student ambassadors today and they can include that on their tour. Uh, the tour will then end back in Anchor Court, which is where you just were before, and we're going to have a lunch. So if you come back here, you should have been given a ticket for lunch. So hopefully you've still got um, a hold of that. And then you can exchange that for some food and drink. And then after that, from 12.30, we've got a discipline event. So we're going to be moving to a few different venues. So if you're in um, biological sciences and environmental sciences, you're going to be going to the Biology Discovery Center, which you'll see on your campus tour today. So that's kind of just in that direction there. It's our big um, lab building. And if you're in chemistry, uh, physics, forensic sciences, you're going to be moving into what we call um, physical sciences 0008, which is basically just off the opposite side of Anchor Court. Um, Ingo and another woman, Sue, so they're both chemists. They're going to um, take you through the event um, over there. So lots of opportunities. You'll meet your course coordinators in these discipline events and then lots of other students. So you'll get another opportunity um, to chat uh, in a little bit. I'm going to pass over to Megan. So she's our um, course advisor, and she's going to give you some enrollment and course advice. Yeah, you happy to use it? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Flinders. Um, so my name's Megan. Um, as Marsha said, um, I'm one of the enrollment and course advisors. Uh, in the College of Science and Engineering. Um, there's two of us. There's also my colleague, Natalie Anderson. She's next door in the other presentation, um, giving the same speech as me. Um, so basically our role is to support you in the overall structure and organisation of your degree, sort of the admin side, I suppose, of your degree. Um, so today, I'm just gonna go through some three short tips to sort of get you started um, and help you along your way as you begin your journey here at Flinders. So the first tip today is knowing about um, your course rule and your enrolment pattern. Um, so we've created uh, study plans. I think we've got most, hopefully all of the, the, college, the courses within the College of Science and Engineering uh, up on the study planner site. So the best way to find it is to Google study planner at Flinders um, and then you'll see a little search engine like this. Uh, this year we've done an engineering uh, based search engine. We had science for the last, <laughs> the last enrolment session. Uh, so, so here's the example we've used is we typed in civil. So basically if you think of a, a keyword from your degree, if you type that in, perhaps don't use Bachelor of Science because you'll get lots of different uh, choices. Perhaps pick your specialisation, etc. That will give you a much more uh, smaller list to choose from. Um, so then you can just click on your course and it'll bring up a PDF that looks a bit like this and it gives a suggested plan of how to, to undertake your topics. Um, we've looked at semester availability, prerequisites, um, so it's, it's one suggested way that you can take your, take your degree. So that's our first tip of the day. Um, and most of you, this is what you, if you're in one degree, this is probably your best um, tool to use. But if you're applying for, say, credit from previous study, or you've been admitted to a combined degree, um, you'll need some extra assistance and by using our tip two of going to ask Flinders. Um, because we basically, with the College of Science and Engineering, um, with combined degrees, because you can choose pretty much anything to combine with anything, um, we generally need a student to ask Lodge, Flinders, ask Lodge and ask Flinders request. 
um, and then we can put together a combined plan for you. So if that's the situation for you, please do that as soon as you can and we can then put together a combined degree plan for you. Um, if you're seeking credit from previous study, from a university level study, please put in and ask Flinders. Um, timetable clashes you can't resolve, or if you just need help and you're not sure who to go to to get that help, please put in and ask Flinders. It'll get directed to the relevant area that can assist with your inquiry. Um, in terms of your who to ask about your topics, if you're already enrolled and want to talk more about inf more information about the content of your topic, please ask your topic coordinator or your lecturer. Um, but if you're in trying to enrol and you can't enrol in the topic, please put in an Ask Flinders um, and we can then assist you further with that. And then my final tip. We, the College of Science and Engineering, has a course advice drop-in session every day of the week uh, at Bedford Park campus from Monday to Friday, 11.30 to 1. You can, it's just a first in, best dressed. We see, we see everyone in the order that you um, attend. Um, and you'll have a one-on-one -on -one meeting who, with the course advisor that's on that day. Um, so anyone is welcome to attend that. Um, if you need any support today, we will actually be out in Anchor Court during your lunch break um, from, I think it's, what are they there, from 11... 11.45 to 12.30. So uh, two of us will be out, Nat and I will be out here today. So please feel free to come and see one of us if you've got any issues right now that you want some support with. Um, but as I said, any other day, feel free to visit us um, and we can support you. Any time of the year, you can come in and, and um, we may not be able to help you, but we can at least point you in the right direction of the person that can assist you. Um, so I think that's, I've been through everything else. Yeah, so all the best with your studies here at Flinders. If anyone has any questions right now, please let me know. I'm happy to answer a question now. Otherwise, please come out and see us if you've got anything you want to talk to us one-on-one -on -one about today. Any questions? Excellent. Thank you very much, Megan. No worries. My so pleasure. there'll be, um, we can have a clap. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now we will have, so Megan and Natalie will be set up on tables during lunch. Thank you. Yes, and then we amazing. also have um, some clubs as well. So uh, the College of Science and Engineering has a whole heap of different clubs. So paleo, maths and stats. Uh, what do we have? We've got the Biology Society, so there's lots of different clubs. So you can meet representatives from those clubs today at lunch um, and say hello and think about, find out a bit more. They're also hosting an online forum next Monday that's advertised through the Orientation Planner. Um, so Melanie, who's the kind of the student club's rep, um, she's hosting that, so you can also join that. So just sign up by the orientation planner and then find out a little bit more. It's also a great way um, to get to meet um, students in the uni. And remember, these will be people also who might not be in first year, so you'll get to meet some second years, third years, and honours as well. Okay, so essentials. <laughs> so the, what's, what do you think the biggest thing is that you need to have working for your first week? What was that? A laptop. a laptop. You need a laptop? And what happens if you want to go on to Flow? What might you need? Wi-Fi. Now, should you use your own Wi-Fi? No. We have Wi-Fi at the uni. So, step one, edgy ROM. So find edgy ROM. Feel free. Get your phone out now. Have a look to see if you can find it. Now, your fan. Your fan is a really important, um, it's like your username, and you're going to use it for everything to log on to Flow. So you're going to use your fan to log on to Edgy ROM. You're going to use your fan to log on to Flow. Some of your exams may be online exams, so you're going to need to remember that, um, that fan. And then you've got your university password. So both of those will be required to log on to Edgy ROM. So if you're on campus, Definitely use this, um, don't use your own Wi-Fi. And a bit of a tip, if you're at another uni, so say you're in the city at Adelaide or UniSA, you can still use this as well. So um, set that up, and usually in your classes in that first week, next week, your lecturers will remind you about this. The other little tip that's really good to know is that the university gives you the Microsoft Office suite for free. So has everyone found that? Yeah? Where did you find it? It was on Okta. It was on Okta. So go to Okta and you'll see it says 
what's it say, Microsoft Office 360 or something like that. You can download that. You'll have, um, obviously, Word, PowerPoint, Excel. You're going to need all of that this year. So if you haven't already downloaded it, aim to do it before you um, have your first classes next week. OK, student card. You do need your student card. Uh, you'll need it for photocopying. If you need to photocopy or print something, uh, for exams, uh, you would normally have to have your ID and you pop that. Obviously, for public transport and stuff like that, you're going to need it. So if you haven't already got your student ID card, aim to do that at some time uh, this week. Again, this is all done online. Has anyone got theirs already? A couple? Did they send it to you? Yeah, so it's going to come in the mail. Okay, enrolling in your topics. Now, this can be tricky. So Megan talked about clashes and things like that. I know I've had lots of emails at a to as, as a topic coordinator from students who say, oh, I've got such and such clashing. Now, one of the rules of thumb at Flinders is that if it's a lecture, it is recorded. So if you have a lecture clash, unless you've been told differently from the topic coordinator, that clash is rectifiable in that you can, you can sometimes there might be live events, so via Collaborate, so you can watch it live, or you can catch up later with the recording. Whether you're enrolled in that online recording class or not, you can still access it. And those links will be available via Flow. Yep? So if you're, say, if you're sick or something one day and you have a lecture that day, so you can just stay at home and watch it online, right? Excellent, yeah. So his question was, what happens if you're sick? Um, can you then catch up with that lecture and watch it later? And the answer is definitely yes. That'll be available um, for you to watch at any time. Now, that's our first real question today. Um, what are you studying? Uh, oh, you get the free textbook. There you go. Now, if you don't want to carry it around with you today, you can give it back to me and pick it up. Um, Thank you. But yes, there Very you go. Much. Free textbook. <laughs> I said there was a good prize. I only have one textbook but I do have coffee vouchers. <laughs> so there you go, good reason to ask questions. Now this afternoon at the quiz events, whichever one you're going to, there's lots of prizes there as well. And I hear chemistry has a textbook to give out. Okay, so textbooks, perfect timing. Now, I had a good question from someone earlier today who I met during registration, which was, do I need to buy the textbook? So. Have a look at each of your topics. They've got a reading list. And if you click on that, it'll say whether the textbook is recommended or required. So a required textbook means we think you should probably get it. But it also means the library buys more copies. So one of the reasons in first year biology we say it's a required textbook is then we get more copies at the library, plus that textbook I just gave you has an online version. So that's cheaper. You can get it for about $60. But it also means you can borrow it online by the library as well. So before you go out and buy the textbook for whatever topic it is, check the reading list, see how many copies they have available in the library, and then decide. I personally find the textbook quite useful. And in first year biology, at least semester one and two, and a lot of the biology topics will use it throughout the whole year. Um, I think chemistry is quite similar. But it is very heavy, so you might not want to lug that around with you. Um, and think about, your, obviously, your finances. Some of the textbooks you can get secondhand. So if it's the previous version, that's fine. Uh, some of the textbooks, like I saw the online ones, you can rent, like for a semester. Um, so you could think about that as well. But check out what the library has available. No, so I think it's just a semester, but you can borrow it from the library as an e-text as well. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't go and buy that. Do so you get a coffee voucher for that? Next question. So this is valid for today from that coffee cart, which I think closes at three. There you go. Excellent. Parking. Oh, one of our student ambassadors. Do you want to tell us about parking at Flinders? What's parking like at Flinders, Zane? It's really good if you get here early. Um, yeah, so generally, if you don't get here at like 9 or 10, you're not going to get a car park in car park 1, and you just end up going to car park 3, and everyone fits in car park 3. But generally, it's not too bad. If you just come for like in the morning, you would get a park easily in any car park you want. But 
Otherwise, you've just got a little bit of walk down the hill. Yeah, so it can be a walk. So my recommendation, if you can, is if you get here before nine, you're fine. You can definitely get a park, car park. If you're driving and you're coming after nine, it can be a lot more challenging and you might have to park in, what do they call it, Siberia, and then walk down the hill. <laughs> so just be aware of that. Have a look, because at Flinders, our classes start on the hour and they end at 10 to. So you've got about 10 minutes and then labs and things often will close the doors at 10 past. So you're not allowed in if you're late because you'll miss the work health and safety. So just think really carefully. Maybe talk to the ambassadors again on the tour um, today about parking and, and some tips they might have. Uh, you do have to pay for parking. Not this week. For orientation, it's free. Um, so you might want to have a look at getting a permit if you're planning to drive you know, regularly. Um, if it's a one-off, you can download an app. And, um, and use that to pay as well. Loop bus. So there's lots of loop buses and they take you down to Sturt, they'll take you to Tonsley. I hear they're slow. Talk to your ambassadors again about that. Um, they'll show you some of the stops. Yes? Um, quick question about the car parking. So in terms of paying for parking, is it paid weekly or semester? How does that I work? I think, has a, one of our ambassadors of you paid as a student? Here. Um, yes, so you can pay for that uh, as a semester or as a year, and that's through VPerm that you find on Okta. Okay. When I checked the other day, it was actually cheaper to pay it for a semester, so I don't know if it's still the same. So how much was it? I was about 97 for a semester, but 240 for the year. Mm. You can also do it by day if you have a summer park. Yeah, so... That's why every hour that you're here as well. So if you're only here for one hour, yeah. yeah, so work out what's going to work um, best for you for parking. Okay, so yes, the loop bus is something you can definitely um, catch, but um, talk to your ambassadors again about, about that process. Okay, there are lots of scholarships, and I know last year they had extra scholarships. It's just not always on academic merit, so it is well worth having a look. There's also something through FUSA, which they talked about, um, so the Student Association. They also have um, some small uh, pots of money that they give out as well for hardship and, um, and help. So have a good look at the scholarship page as well. And all of this information is, is on that Flinders University orientation page. So you can go back and have a look at this later. Flow. Now you're going to hear all of us this week, probably next week, we'll all be talking about flow and we'll show you a kind of a navigation of flow. Um, some people have said they can't see their topics yet, so you might just want to have a look at your settings because you should all definitely have access to every topic you're enrolled in. I have heard that there's a future, it says future topics, and that's, that's the problem, it's a filter. So go back, if you can't see your flow page, so you're enrolled in four topics and you can't see any of them, um, have a look at the settings again. And this is where all the class information will be posted. You know, you might want to log on now as well and see um, what information is there. Okay, and I guess another important point is collaborate. Now, we only first started really using this last year, um, when we had obviously the shutdown here at the uni and across the state. So Collaborate is an online learning tool. I think of it as the Flinders Zoom. So this is where if you have a class and it might be a supervised study, a tutorial, it could even be a lecture or a workshop and it says it's live via Collaborate, um, this is where you would go. So it's that little purple icon, you'd click on that um, there might be different links for each of the classes and then that'll get you virtually into the class and then your lecturer or might be your demonstrator, whoever it is, they'll deliver that class online. Um, just like if you've done Teams or Zoom, you can ask questions using your voice or type, all that sort of thing. So um, check it out. You can just kind of go in and see what it's like um, and just look for that Either the lecturer will use the symbol or they'll write live via Collaborate. Um, some classes obviously are in person, so just check if you're enrolled in an online version or the um, in-person version. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next part, which is getting prepared. So, Welcome Hub. You're going to go, if you haven't already, down to the Hub. 
Um, that's that new beautiful building which they showed in all the videos. There are staff down there, student ambassadors, so just like ours, they'll be in the lovely blue t-shirts. They also do their own separate campus tours, so if you want to do another tour, you can definitely go on that. Um, and it's going to be 10 to 3, and it's all week. But I think the main activities are until Thursday. Do they have a special event Friday, usually? I think I've got that on a slide coming up as well. Okay, finding your way at Flinders. So this is the Flinders orientation page. I think I've mentioned it before. This is where all the information is going to go. So a recording of today's welcome lecture, um, there's stacks of resources from the library, health and counselling, you name it, it's up there. So it's really for, you know, it's there for students who want a bit of extra help. Um, some of our online students who might be listening now, that's where they can go because they're not able to obviously come here on campus. Um, so it's a great place um, to have a look at. And you should be automatically enrolled in that, so it should be one of your um, Flinders topics. Help. There is so much help on campus. Our student ambassadors will talk a little bit about that today as well. Um, and I think they talked about it a little bit um, in the videos. I would say the first person to go to is probably your topic coordinator, if it's topic help you need, so academic support. And then we've got health and counselling on campus, if it's more emotional support or health support. And all of those are free services. So you don't pay to go to the doctor here or um, to one of the counsellors here. Okay, how to survive. So let's get our ambassadors up. How many we have? We've got four or five. Excellent. Are you guys happy standing? Yeah? Okay. So I'll just clean that. So we've got a couple questions, and we'd actually also love some questions um, from the audience. So if you want to introduce yourself and then answer your first question, which is, um, what are you studying and why did you choose your course? Hi, everyone. My name's Zane, and I'm doing a little bit different. So I'm doing a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Teaching. So I'll come out as a maths and physics teacher. Um, I chose my course because I tried engineering, wasn't quite for me, but I still love science, so I moved into teaching because it runs in my family and we all love it. Yep, uh, my name is Susie. I'm currently doing my honours, so looking at research, and I did my bachelor's degrees in molecular biology and maths. Um, I picked molecular biology because I did biology and chemistry at high school and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I ended up doing maths as some electives in my first year and I really enjoyed it and decided to do a whole degree in maths as well. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm studying molecular biology. Um, I chose this because during first semester I was actually enrolled in animal behaviour, but I really enjoyed the molecular aspects of the first year bio topic, so I decided to change. Hi everyone, my name is Gurleen. I'm studying IT and I'm doing specialisation in networking and cybersecurity. I chose this because I love coding and I love maths. Hi, I'm Jasmine. I'm studying biomedical engineering and medical science combined. And I went into it because I lost a bit with my math teacher and ended up loving it and stuck to it. So. Excellent. Okay. Next question. What are the big differences between uh, university and school? I think just getting used to lectures because it's very different from a classroom. It's like you get out what you put in, so the more effort you put in, it'll be easy, you'll love it. But if you're sitting back, there won't be as many people to push you, so you've got to look for help if you ever want it. I found that one of the big differences was like in high school, if you had like an assignment due for a class, the teacher would keep reminding you of it every class and would always be on your back to do that work for the class. Um, but at uni, you kind of have to be a little bit more responsible for yourself, um, which is nice in some ways because you don't have people nagging you to do things, but it does also mean that you have to take a little bit more accountability and responsibility for yourself. Uh, yeah, I was going to say pretty much the same things. Like um, you have to be very on top of your own work like you don't get someone telling you what to do all the time and yeah there's um I think there's a little bit more freedom around doing what you want to do as well though which is also nice um I am an international student over here I don't really know about the schools over here but yeah I think we're more responsible in uni than at schools that's what I know I think <laughs> 
Uh, I reckon it's resources. You've got more resources to use now than you've ever had before. You won't know where half of them are, but once you figure out, there's so many of them and they're so good. I came rural and it's like amazing how much stuff you've got. You've got databases you've never had before. The library is the best. Make friends with librarians. <laughs> And this is the big one. So where did you go for help? I've done all of my help online. So I've gone through Ask Flinders for everything. I know you can go in person, but I've used Ask Flinders. It's been great. Uh, I'll go with if you need help in a topic. I've usually gone to like the topic coordinator and things like that. Um, say if I've got an assignment and I really don't know how to approach it or I have a problem I don't know how to solve, um, then I usually go to like one of the tutors in the class. They'll usually have an idea of maybe somewhere I could look, maybe another textbook or something I haven't found yet um, or the topic coordinator if I'm really, really stuck. Um, so like Susie said, I've gone to topic coordinators. Sometimes if you've got a friend in your class as well, they might be able to help you. Um, but also I've gone to Flinders Connect for help with things like sorting out timetables and degrees and things like that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So when you start at uni, you always need help with your enrollment and stuff. So if you go to Flinders Connect, they're always going to guide you what are the best topics you can choose for your first year. And also if you have any issues related to topics, you can always go to Topic Coordinator. If it's um, class issues, definitely go to your lecturers or your demonstrators and mentors. Um, even your student representatives you'll find are very, very helpful uh, once they get used to what they're doing. They're really good. And you might actually want to think about being a student representative or a topic representative. So every topic will have a few, so depending on how big the topic is. We're going to have nine in first year biology. So it's a great way to meet other students, but also then you're a voice for your um, student cohort. So people might come to you uh, for questions as well. Now, do we have any questions for our student ambassadors? I've got three more coffee vouchers left. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> coffee voucher or question? question. I'm joking. <laughs> can have both. There we go. Um, so last year, things were a bit crazy with a lot of uni being online. Um, so I guess what were the biggest differences with everything being online? And I guess if uni was to have to close due to COVID again, do you have any advice for that? I think for me, it was mainly the only thing that changed hugely was lectures. So lectures, I used to come in person because I found it was really good and engaging and I'd be really good at it. But lectures are always recorded online. You can watch them at home whenever you need to. Um, they've done really well with COVID in terms of labs, because I know lots of people will be doing labs. Um, they've just done catch-up labs, and they seem to cope really well. I'm not sure whatever else. Uh, you do lab work? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a lot of my topics are very lab heavy, so I found that um, going online with the labs wasn't quite the same experience, and I found that a couple of the topics struggled with that, but I think now that they've had experience with like what they have to do, it would be better. Um, my advice would also be for lectures, if they do them on Collaborate Live, attend to it when they would normally do it, because otherwise it's so easy to just get behind. And like, if it's an early one, you can just rock up in your pajamas and it's fine, no one sees you. <laughs> my advice would be that don't sleep on your Collaborate and turn your mics on. <laughs> That's the funniest part we have seen in some of the classes. People leave their mics on, keep on talking, what are the stuff they want to, and. That gets funny in the class, though. <laughs> um, don't be afraid to like go out and study in a place where there's people around you. Although they may be more noisy, it kind of forces you to watch your lecture because you kind of feel a little like, oof, I don't want this person to see me doodling in my book while I'm meant to be watching this lecture. So even when COVID was going around, the uni shut off going online lectures before it shut down the uni. So you can still come into uni, just grab a spot at the library. There's plenty of quiet spaces, even in the Flinders Connect area, where you can set up and no one will bother you for the whole day, but you've got people around you and that'll kind of force you to study a bit harder. Yeah. And we've got the Silk Building, which you'll meet or you'll see today on your campus tour. So that's our first year science, science learning space. And that's quite a nice, um, lovely space. There's a foosball table in there as well. So maybe not that quiet a space. Do we have any other questions for our student ambassadors? Coffee voucher? No? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much, guys.
That was great. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, last part is about making the most, and then we move on to our uh, special guest, our alumni. So there's a few different things happening, and you may have already seen this perhaps when you registered for this event, or you might have registered for other things. So this is the official O week, and then we have three more weeks of orientation. So we've got um, Connect Week, which is all about meeting new people. So that's why our clubs are holding their welcome uh, next week. Uh, Skills Week, which is the official week two, and that's about, so maybe you need some help with maths, or maybe um, writing, or it might be, you know, something referencing. So there's going to be lots of workshops on skills you need. And then the last week, week three, is Wellbeing Week. So I think they're going to have yoga, lots of um, spiritual events. I think we'll be at Oasis as well. So make sure you make the most of that. Those first few weeks when you're in your classes aren't too intense. So you have lots of spare time. So go down to the hub and have a look at what's um, available. And then obviously go to the orientation planner too. Some of the events you can just rock up, but other ones you'll need to register for those. Uh, so obviously there's lots of um, social events that are happening uh, this week. So today, what are we? Tuesday. So you've got, there's a comedy event happening in the tavern. And I think the ambassadors will obviously um, walk you by the tavern today. And um, I guess we've got a market on Thursday, which is usually quite good as well. So again, have a look at some of these events. And the last, so we've got orientation videos. I'm going to skip that because this is the really important one. So say you've come out of today, you get to the end of the day, and you think, oh, I still have lots of burning questions. What we have here at Flinders are O guides. And there's a group of them that have trained um, from science and engineering. And they have a program. It's offered both um, live, and if you're listening online, um, there's online options as well. So the first one's actually today, I think starting at 3 o'clock. And um, I'll have that actually on the next slide. We'll have a look at that. There's also an e-mentoring program. So for those who are listening online or viewing this at a later date, um, they might want to um, sign up for that program. So these are all, um, again, free services and a great way to find out a little bit more about Flinders. So the O-Guide program, so today it's 3 to 4 p.m. in Anchor Court. Um, you do have to register via Eventbrite, so they know how many um, people are coming. Um, but I really recommend that today. You can meet the O-Guides. And then tomorrow there's two events, one um, from 3 to 4, and the other one 4 to 5, um, which is an online event. How are we going? We're nearly at the end. Yes, we had a question. I think there will be. So um, I'd have a look. So it might be worth going to one of these sessions this week and finding out more. But my understanding is they're trying to be flexible. So there should be more than one opportunity. And then they're meeting up. The idea of these O guides is someone you're going to then meet with throughout the duration of the semester. So it's not just a one-off event. Obviously, you can choose for it to be one-off. But they're people you can meet um, and hopefully connect with and see this semester and even into next semester. So yeah, find out tomorrow in that, um, or today, uh, when you go to that event. OK, we all good? OK, excellent. I'm going to invite Luke up. Now, Luke, would you like to use the, are you a lapel uh, or hand? Yeah. Yep, excellent. So Luke Raglis is a previous student. So he has a Bachelor of Science conferred in 2018. So he's going to talk to you about his experience both here at Flinders and then how it set him up um, for the workforce. So I'm going to actually start with a clap to thank you for coming. <laughs> it's really wonderful to have an alumni because I want you to start thinking about, so today is about obviously, you know, seeing the university, meeting other people, meeting your student ambassadors. But then you want to start thinking about, well, what do I need to do in these first few years to really set me up um, for my future career? So I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Well, I guess the, the important thing is 
go to your lectures where you can. The last thing you want to be doing is coming to the end of your semester, trying to watch 10 weeks of lectures. It, it does not work. <laughs> so yeah, um, I studied a Bachelor of, Animal, oh, Bachelor of Science Animal Behaviour, so 2014, 2017. So I came in, you know, I did a mid-year start. Um, technically, I was a mature age student um, because I wasn't a, a school leaver when I enrolled. I'd went to TAFE beforehand after school. I um, did a diploma of animal technology. Um, so I spent a number of years with the University of Adelaide as an animal technician, which is working with a bunch of rats. Um, but so I sort of through my degree, I did the whole range of, of the studying kind of variations. I was studied part-time working full-time, studied full-time working part-time. And in my final year, I wasn't working, but I was volunteering, which I think is, probably one of the, the biggest, um, well, the most important things to, that I found in, in getting a job afterwards, um, which I'll get into a little bit later. But the one thing that I found that most um, employers will be looking for is that practical experience. And with Flinders, um, with my degree as well, you got a lot of that practical, sort of that industry type experience. Um, and so the first one was field work. Most of the, because I did animal behavior, if you're doing a conservation type degree, you probably, you know, will get a job with some sort of fieldwork component. And so through my degree, we did lots of fieldwork. We're going out collecting water samples just from the local creeks or soil samples or whatever it is. The other one is your lab experience. Um, you're probably doing every week some sort of lab work. Um, and that, again, most of your jobs that you're going, and this is my experience, so all of my work outside of this had, you know, fieldwork and lab experience. And it's, you know, it's priceless that experience you get. Make sure you're keeping records of what you're doing because what you're doing is, is developing a list of skills, creating a CV, which I think you should do early on, um, and just writing down all of these skills. It's really going to be important when you are approaching a you know, potential employer and you say, I've done all these things. The other thing that I was lucky enough to do, and obviously I don't know how it's working at the moment, but I had the opportunities to, to study um, overseas. So with my degree, when I was studying, there was Fiji, Maldives, China, Singapore, and, and South Africa was, was one as well, which is what I um, managed to do. So in 2016 and 2017, I did a, a both of those were a month long, um, you know, the, the topic was, yeah, a month long in South Africa, and, and one of them we were up near, north near Kruger, and the other one we were down south near Cape Town. And that, when, when I'm talking about experience, all of that experience that you're wanting to get we were doing all of those things in the one place. So we were doing, you know, we're doing the field work. So we were doing uh, vegetation surveys. We were doing uh, animal, uh, large herbivore observations. Um, well, the, the bird and the dassey, that was uh, you know, before the trip in, in Cape Town, but the lion was on the trip. So these pictures, when we're going to and from the sites we're working at, we're going past these, you know, the big game. It's pretty cool. So in terms of the, the field work we were doing, you can see the, the picture on the right there. That's our demonstrator showing us how to bird band. So we were mist netting, we were catching birds, we were getting that hands-on experience, and you can see me doing some weird kung fu looking pose up the top there. <laughs> I was actually just releasing a, a sunbird that we'd captured in the net, you know, I just banded that. So that's, that's the experience you don't get unless you were doing a specific course or you managed to sort of, you know, like sort of, yeah, enroll in something to be able to do that. And the, the one on the bottom there, this one here, we're actually doing a vegetation transect and we had the giraffe come through and we even had ones where we had to abandon because the elephants were just coming through as well. <laughs> and the one on the bottom there with the rat, so with these topics, we were able to develop our own experiments, um, you know, develop the question, our hypothesis, what do we think is going to happen? And so with this one, we were looking at the difference in um, species uh, diversity and abundance in, in vegetation that it um, large herbivores had access to versus where they didn't have um, access to. And so that was a, a, a flay rat we caught in, in small mammal traps. So life after university, what I was talking about the volunteering, in that final year I was volunteering with an organisation called TURN, which was an ecosystem surveillance organisation. I was there one day a week um, just, you know, inputting some data, managing so, um, some of their um, samples, say they did field and um, soil and uh, vegetation surveys. So I was just, you know, putting, you know, vouchers and, and labelling on specimens and stuff. Beginning of uh, 2018, they had a position open up as a soils technician. Through my degree, I had not had any experience with soil, you know, apart from a little bit in labs, but 
but I'd had all that background experience. I'd had that field experience. I'd had that lab experience. I'd had the data management experience, just as you, you will get through your degree. And the fact that I was volunteering there, they knew who I was. They knew how I worked. And also, I knew how they worked as well. And so when that position came up, they asked if I wanted it. You know, all the training was done there. And I said, yep. And so that organisation, they would do two weeks in the field and then two weeks back in, in the lab. And so all those little dots were all the different um, survey sites that we would went to. And so the first, my first day, essentially, was two weeks in the Victorian highlands, and, you know, digging a lot of holes and everything, which might not sound that exciting, but, you know, you get to see some amazing places, and me, you know, being obsessed with animals, I still managed to find the lizards and the frogs and everything. I'd go out at night time or I'd get up early and, and find them all. A lot of reptiles. And then once I finished there, so I was there for 18 months, and so all of a sudden I had all this experience based on that first job. And so then for a while I worked for the Department of Primary Industries with their South Australian Research Development Institute. Still in a similar type role, a lot of field work, um, a lot of lab work and a lot of data management, but I was working, they had a couple of projects, um, looking at the different biotic and abiotic factors that affected wine quality. And so there was a lot of that lab work and they also had um, a project on water management, um, obviously climate change, um, you know, in the drought situations. And so I spent about six months working with them. Again, now getting more and more skills, and which takes me to where I work now, which is a consultancy called Healthy Environs. I'm their sustainability consultant, um, which the reason I, I got there is I had this background and they didn't have this position available. You know, this is another thing I think is important is reach out to people, reach out to people in industry, send emails, make cold calls, you know, I did a lot of that, and which is how I got this position. It wasn't available. They saw I had these skills, this background, and that's why they, they took me on. And so with this one, I'm doing the data analysis, report writing, which, you know, I know in a lot of your topics, you're going to get sick of writing reports, sick of looking at Excel spreadsheets, but it is important. A lot of these, you know, most of these science degrees, you're going to be writing a lot of reports. So get used to that. Start, you know, try to enjoy it because it is good once you're starting to, to get, make sense of things, numbers and patterns and stuff, it, it is really good. And so, you know, like I was saying, the, the biggest thing is, is reaching out as well. Yeah, LinkedIn. If you haven't got a LinkedIn profile, I suggest you make one. That's an easy way of, of reaching out to people in industry. Now, even though I don't do a lot of field work, I still manage to <laughs> dig it out there. Um, I mean, that's really... Yeah, I mean, that, that's sort of my tips is, is volunteering if you can. I know everyone's circumstances are different. You don't have the time. If it's an hour a week or whatever, try to do that. And, and yeah, and just start reaching out to people. You can do that, I think, early on. Say, you, hey, I'm starting this degree. This is the kind of place I'd like to work. You know, just getting my name out there. Um, and then getting a, getting a CV together, getting a resume together, getting that template down. So when you do find a job you want to apply for, you, you're ready to, ready to go instead of just trying to like, put everything together. And enjoy uni. You know, it's, it can be nervous. You know, I came, I didn't know anyone. Within a couple of weeks, you got friends, you got your lab partners that you become friends with. And so, yeah, enjoy your time here. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful. So, did anyone have any questions for Luke? Oh, excellent. Yes? Um, do you find those volunteering opportunities or canyon through blenders, or do you, do you go elsewhere? Oh, I, I was just, I was looking for. Nothing for, you know, places that I wanted to work at. I was Googling, you know, environmental consultants, environmental jobs, you know, organisations in Adelaide. And that's how I came up with that one. I gave him a ring and I said, this is my situation. I'm in uni, just looking to ideally get a job, but I'm happy to volunteer. And they said, yeah, come in and volunteer. But um, I think the NRM jobs, um, they often have a lot of volunteer um, positions as well. But if there's a place you're interested in, call them. And, and you say, yeah, you're happy to volunteer. So that's what I'll do. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Okay. Well, that's the end of the welcome lecture.